Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Second of February, two thousand and twenty. Recite from Surah Al Ghashia. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة أَفَلَا يَنظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبِلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ نُصِبَتْ وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُصَيْطِرْ إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم. This this surah along with the previous surah surah al-A'la are the surahs that Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to recite in Jum'ah and uh, Eid prayers. So it, it carries importance. And this surah tells us what will happen to those who, who are disbelieving in Allah and this message and His message and the messengers. And what happens to those who accept this message. So some horrible scenes from hellfire and some uh, enjoyable uh, scenes from the paradise. And it starts with those who, whose face will be so grumpy and black and sad and uh, panicked, all kind of horrible description of these of those people who will know their fate on that day that they are losing now. They are losing. And that day they will start to fear, but that's that's uh, the exam paper has been taken. You cannot write any answers after the death. There is no answers, so they have. They didn't took the opportunity of of the exam time. And now the time is over, and now they are showing all kind of fear and wants to study and these things. Wants to return back to the exam hall, and these things will not avail. So it's a great lesson that we should always try to add as much possible answer to the to the exam paper before it's uh, too late and worse is those amilatun nasiba tasla naran hamia those who actively work in this world but they work in the opposite direction they work to fight the believers to f to fight in the cause of tawut those who are soldiers of dictators, those who are tools in the hand of dictators who oppress their people, who, who fight against Allah and this messenger, who actively participate in creating obstacles for the believers and those who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those people they are double losers because 
the the actively work and exercise and exert and maybe the work at night so so they are doing activity they are making some sacrifice but that sacrifice is not for the cause of Allah so they have they have taken troubles in this world but yet they are entering yet they are entering in Jahannam Tasla Nar and Hamya isn't that a, a great uh, misery for those people then Allah describes some of the horrible sins of what kind of drink they will be given very hot drink it might boil their stomach and they will be given food that benefits nothing it will increase their hunger will not bring any energy to their body increase their hunger so there will be food but with no value so these are these are the mockery of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against those people who have been opposing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya in this world so it's a great warning for those people really but on the opposite side, we have wujuhun yawmaydin na'ima, the faces that are glorious, not the gloomy face. So this is a tool of Quran all the time, is the contrast between two scenes. So the beauty of day or the beauty of uh, a beautiful is... Uh, accentuated is magnified by describing the ugliness of the ugly so contrasting through the the opposite extremes is, 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 a, is a powerful tool that Quran explains so they are happy these people will be happy they have worked sincerely in this dunya they have made sacrifices and now they are seeing the outcome so it brings joy and happiness to their heart and this happiness is overflows in their face Naima, very soft faces filled with glory and light and radiance they will be sit in a high chairs all their sayings will be beautiful say no obscene says sayings they will have very nice uh, springs and waters and in other places we know there will be four types of rivers flowing with honey with milk with wine all those things will be there in the paradise so this attracts people and these are not fables or false promises these are true promises from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all in a sudden Allah brings us back to this world and asks us to really see Allah's miracle and beauty in the nature same, did, same way that Allah did in the previous surah haven't they seen, seen the evil the camel how Allah beautified and made all kind of wonders in his creation in this creation of the camel and Allah uh, gave this camel all kind of tools and mechanisms that makes it survive uh, in this harsh desert weather and condition And heaven then seen the sama, the sky, and the heaven, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it stand there without pillars. What kind of mechanism, what kind of architect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this beautiful engineer, 
this knowledgeable engineer who has perfected all kind of creation and look at the earth how Allah made it easy for us to move for our transport and then there was these mountains erected in the surface of the earth to bring a balance on this earth all this kind of uh, natural things that we see are attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything has a purpose everything was made with certainty the amount of oxygen nitrogen amount of those minerals in our body with a slight changes here and there in our biochemistry either in our body or in this nature things will not work people are discussing the effect of increasing the temperature of earth by just one degree and how it will bring global catastrophe to this nature you know, to this uh, earth it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has made all kind of sustenance on this earth so these are foods for our thinking and that thinking should yield our belief and faith of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that faith should should yield to accept his religion true religion which is which came by the last prophet who is meant to be the prophet for all mankind not only for the Arabs and that's Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the message is well kept in Quran so these are the outcome of those thinkings when Allah asks us to think and ponder this should be the causal chain of events that should end by accepting the true religion we should not step somewhere stop somewhere in the middle of this journey uh, in search of truth and stop somewhere the natural outcome should be when you reach to the final solution which is acceptance of Islam as a religion that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the Prophet that keep reminding them keep reminding them but you cannot force the belief in the people because in this journey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only knows what's in the heart many people might know the truth they will reach to the right conclusion yet they do not accept that could be so many things they might uh, think that how can I leave my parents ideology how can I uh, uh, I mean human beings is so mysterious and complex creation that so many things can stand behind you and the truth and what human you see when you meet a person and talk with him you see only tip of an iceberg but below that oh my god hundreds of complexities that might arise from his society from things so Allah says to the Prophet you don't have control over them you can convey the message and that's what is needed convey the message in the best way but the hidayah is at the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everybody will return to Allah and then there will be reward or punishment inna ilayna iyabahum that's how this surah ends that to me will they return they will return to me they will return inna ilayna iyabahum ثُمَّ إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا حِسَابَهُمْ and, and then the hisab will be with me they will, they will return to me and I will then handle their reward or punishment each one accordingly May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu